So Apollo 1, you know the tragedy of the fire in Apollo 1 and losing Ed White, Virg Grissom, Roger Chafee, uh, Frank Borman, you were the only astronaut on the investigating committee, the 21-month period. Um, what happened in those 21 months? What was the process? What was learned? And uh, how confident were you when you got to Apollo 7? Well, the, the, uh, I think that the genius of Jim Webb, who was an, the NASA administrator, shown through there because he, he convinced Congress to allow NASA to investigate itself. And they appointed a, a group of people, of which I was one. But uh, the, the investigation was uh, no holds barred. And it was, it was uh, a very hard-hitting indictment of both NASA and North American. And I think that uh, out of that came the, uh, the uh, Block 2. We called it an improved Gemini, I mean, Apollo spacecraft that uh, eventually uh, was very, very successful. And I honestly believe had it not been for uh, for the fire, we might have had a uh, a in spite an in flight tragedy that would have canceled the program. So I was I think that NASA at that point was probably the finest managed federal federal bureaucracy that's ever been uh, ever been in place. And sometimes I look back on it. I look back on it, and from the country standpoint, I think we'd have been a lot better off if NASA had been running the Defense Department during Vietnam rather than who uh, <laughs> uh, Fred, Fred Hayes, you know, we're not up to 13, obviously, yet, because we're going in sequence here. But what, in terms of personnel and training, what were you doing? Uh, while all these other things are going on to bring you up to speed for whatever you would be assigned down the road? Well, at the front end, uh, when I joined the program, was the same as Al described. We, uh, we went through about six months of uh, textbook training, some field, rudimentary field trips, first geology field trips, and then we got assigned to uh, different disciplines. And uh, I got assigned to uh, Jim McDivitt, uh, who was going to fly the first limb, and Ed Mitchell and I. And uh, he gave us very uh, simple marching orders. Uh, he said, I want you to go to Grumman and make sure I got a good limb. That was it. So uh, Ed and I uh, together, I'm sure mutually, I, I know I spent seven months out of one nine months at Grumman in test. And I'd been in test in every vehicle up through six. In fact, I did not do any tests on the one we flew on 13. Uh, but I'd been in, uh, in vehicle tests, uh, sometimes uh, slipping limbs. I probably had uh, several weeks sleeping in limbs when the tests would get halted and you just uh, stopped and waited for the next things to get figured out and proceed. So that was kind of what I was doing in that period. In fact, I was up at Grumman at the time the Apollo 1 fire came and Jim uh, called me and said, come home. So even though you weren't assigned to cruise at this point, and back to Gene for a moment, everybody was deeply involved in this whole uh, engineering process, working together to make the whole program work? I think we were very fortunate because not only we had uh, top-level leadership that made, uh, made things happen, we had a... Uh, mission control team now that become probably the finest systems engineers that existed in the planet at that time because generally our, our training process, you started training early, was to send the controllers out to the factory, get to know the people who are doing the design and testing, bring back the bundle assembly drawings that was used to build the spacecraft, translate them into doc documentation that you could use in real time. We did the same thing up at Draper Labs, get the program listings and then decompose that to stuff that was useful. So this is the sort of background we had when we went in to help Frank and the team that was looking at what do we got to do different for this next generation of Block 2 spacecraft. After the fire in Apollo 1, Gene, you had a meeting. What, what did you say and uh, what was the result of your... Well, this, this was, uh, I had a bunch of young pups. They'd never been through uh, a disaster of this type before and I got them all in the conference room. 
And I started off talking about the fact that we ought to assume responsibility because we were behind the power curve and our work in mission control. The control center wasn't ready. The training process wasn't working. Nobody really had done their job. And I think across the board from a standpoint of program, we all had to assume responsibility for that particular failure and the loss of the crew. And basically, I talked about and established two words, which are going to be the sounding board. Uh, we're going to use tough and competent. We're going to put it on our blackboards, and we won't erase it until we finish the Apollo program. Tough meaning we are forever accountable for what we do, and in the case of Apollo 1, what we failed to do. I was in the console on the shift before that accident, and there are things I think I could have done. Mm -hmm.